Kerr. Uh, welcome to Sister Wives, Season 18, Episode 6, The Understatement of the Year. Remind you that we do have a Patreon. You don't have to subscribe to it. Some people are a little spicy. Yeah, about you that. do. <laughs> yeah, we, we decided you have to. No, um, but we do a live watch when it drops on Max, and we do it, and we film it, and we put it on our Patreon so that you can watch our live reaction to it. Um, it's down, you can either search Patreon for Nikki Haverstock, or you can go into my description, and you can find the link to the Patreon. You can also find a link to my author page, where I have a whole What's bunch of books. For? for books, I write mystery novels. <laughs> I have one releasing tomorrow called Hot Springs Homicide. Uh, Woohoo, go for me. Um, but the reason I mention all this is because I discovered something. I don't know if John has put it together yet because he's a little slow. Um, no, no, but so we watch this. We record, our, we record our live reaction. We add about 20 minutes of footage to the actual show. It's not a substitute for watching the show. Um, and It's instead of. <laughs> just our snarky immediate commentary and all that. But it gets us both pretty worked up. Sometimes. Um, and so we when, have to like Robin does her bull. So what I discovered was two weeks ago, season episode five, which was all Robin and Mary complaining. Neither one of us could fall asleep until midnight. We just, I know, I know. It was, it was just so bad. And I know if you're thinking that you go, wow, you people are really unhealthy and have a very unhealthy relationship with the show. You are correct. I am not denying it. That and, is, and we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this week. We watched it, and we both commented that we weren't nearly as worked up as we feel like we had been previously. We watched some Bob's Burgers. There was, what, like three minutes of Robin total? Which, I mean, is five minutes too much, but still. So John John did piece it together, which I think is that Robin really sets me off. Because Cody's awful. There's no doubt that Cody's awful. It's clear that he's awful. He's incredibly selfish. But there's something about the fact that Robin tries to make this situation about how it's with her... Like, I'm going to say that she is actually, of all the wives, the least considerate of Cody's actual feelings. Because... His, or, or anyone else's. Or anyone else's. Because even Christine will be like, yeah, I, you know, this is clearly hard for him. I don't care a lot, but I acknowledge it's hard for him. Um, Janelle is having her own issues, and she's like, yeah, I get that he's upset about Christine, but he needs to compartmentalize and deal with my relationship. Mary's like, this is all over, whatever. But Robin's like, this is about me. This is so hard on me. This is not... Ev everything. Everything. Christine's leaving, you know, all of that. And it's infuriating, but we only saw her, like, twice last night. Oh, what a relief. And there weren't even any fake tears until the preview for next week. Uh, yeah. I know, I'm not trying to... Fake tears. There, there never are tears, but, you know. So, oh, I already got a stitch in my side. she pokes herself in the eye. Yeah, I'm making okay. you laugh so hard you got a stitch in your side? <laughs> no. No, that's not the case. Oh, um, so we watched... You took even more notes that you can't read. <laughs> so, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> so last night is when we watched this, is when I take the notes in green. This morning, I rewatched it at two times speed to add on to my notes so I could understand what the first notes say. And they're not that much better than my old notes. But I watched it again and I feel really prepared because I always forget something. And it's always like some good offhand, like not the big picture stuff, but some offhand comment that I'm then like, oh, I wish I had said that. So basically, we have three sort of storylines this episode. We have Christine and her kids. We have Mary and her friend Jen. And then we have Janelle and Cody. And I can sum them all up on kind of a couple words. Christine is moving on. Mary is moving on. Cody can't figure out that he's losing another wife. And she keeps telling him... Well, he doesn't him, care, because that conversation between him and Janelle is all about Christine. Right. But, I mean, like, the man has zero ability to learn from experiences. There are snails that are being trained to jump through hoops that have more ability to connect past events and future events than Cody does with the fact that his wives keep leaving him, even when they say to his face... I want to leave you, and he's like, yeah, so about Christine. She didn't warn me that she was leaving. And then Janelle's like, I am warning you that I am leaving you. Me, you, gone. And he's like, hmm. So if I mentioned Ari recently, 
You don't care. Okay, so we started off in Salt Lake City. Aspen and Mitch and Tony and McKelty are there. They're preparing for Valentine's Day, so we have a rough layout of when this this appeared. If assuming any of this is consistent, there's snow on the ground. Avalon is there as well. Um, Christine is extremely complimentary of Tony. I'm just gonna say I didn't like Tony. I feel like Tony and McKelty were playing up for the camera this whole scene. <laughs> Um, I did not, I, same as last season, I, I, last episode and last season, it just very much feels like she's like, I'm on camera. I'm on camera, mom. Okay. Everybody needs 20 tacos. Everyone, we have to do this. Oh, and it, and the stuff that she's saying is kind of inappropriate. And one of, someone on my, um, Patreon already this morning posted, you know, the second she was in that car, she was like texting Robin. I don't know if that's true or not. Now, I, I do not care if you're a big McKelty fan. Um, you're not, probably not a big R fan. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, some people are like, well, I kind of like McKelty. Hey, that's cool. That's fine. We don't have to agree on everything. This is my opinion. You can be wrong. We I'm don't just, care. I'm just going to say that I'm usually right. So I'm just going to say that. Uh, I would watch out. Um, anyway, so they're talking about Valentine's Day. They talk about what I thought was really interesting. This is this is a, kind of the whole precedent. So... Christine is like, I'm going to be alone on Valentine's Day. Maybe Avalon will be my Valentine's Day. And then they cut to Janelle. And Janelle's like, well, Cody and I aren't talking. And even if we were, even if we were, I wouldn't want to spend it with him or the family. And I was like. Mic drop. Well, well, I was like, well, what does that mean? So for reference, and we actually just did the rewatch of the Valentine's Day episode. I'm not sure if it's up on the you. If it's not up on YouTube now, it's on the Patreon. If it's, but it will be on YouTube soon. Just wait. Um, but or or join our. But Patreon. they did the or join our Patreon. So they did this whole big thing about how they celebrate Valentine's Day as like a family holiday with the kids because it's too weird to have four wives. We saw him on the Valentine's Day go to a flower shop and get four sets of flowers, to which he then gave Christine and, and Robin. He mixed up their flowers. <laughs> Um, uh, but I was wondering, did Janelle mean that she's like, uh, uh, to me, that was a sign that like, even if Cody called me, I don't want to do anything with him or his, or his, his other family. Like she's, she is done. I don't think she meant to say it that way. I think it's one of those things where like, I feel like how done Janelle is with Cody sneaks out. Like, I feel like her public thing is like, yes, I'm still open to reconciling, but really she's like. And I'm also open to the idea of pigs flying. <laughs> like, it has that sort of level of, like, my religious beliefs say that I need to be open to reconciling, so I am. But between you and me, the sun will rise in the west and set in the east mm -hmm. before, uh, or I would say rise in the north and set in the south before this will actually be happening. There you go. I do think it rises in the east and sets in the west. I have that right, correct? Just checking. I could, I had absolutely get those confused. So I've never, I've always been good with West and East because it says we, but in college I had to use a geologic, a Brunton ca um, compass, which when you look at it is swapped East and West because it has to do with whatever direction you're facing. It's, it's a little complicated, but I used it so much in my degree for map making that I started to get East, east and West confused. And, and I've how many maps same. have you made since then? I've made... I have made zero maps from, since then. And I would tell you, in college, I also made all about two. But I you I had to... Good thing you got that degree. I know. Well, I mean, I use... I don't want to use... I was going to say I've used it a lot. No, I, but I, uh, ah. I don't use it that much. But I do... I, well, I made this. Can you guys see that? It was, a, it, was a, it was a solid rock when I started my class. She laid it like an egg. Look at it. I didn't... I didn't... I wonder if I chipped that. It's dinosaur bone. It's a dinosaur cabochon. And it was a solid rock at the beginning of my class. And then he cut a slab. And then I cut out a circle. Well, oval. And then I grinded it uh, off. And it, if you can, I don't know if you can see it very well. It's got like hints of blue in it. So I, I still, I still do stuff. Anyway, where was I? I'm sorry. Somewhere. I got a little distracted. Um, um, we have important stuff to do here. I honestly don't know what I was saying. It was rising. Oh, she she is checked out of Valentine's Day. And then the mo I will say that one of the most infuriating part of the episode was when Robin then goes, 
Valentine's Day is really hard and it's so difficult and it's so hard and it's just awful. And I thought, so this is what I think is happening. She knows that they're constantly being accused of wanting to be monogamous. So she can't be like, yeah, we're going to have a nice, quiet um, Valentine's Day, just the two of us, because then people will be like, ha ha, you do want to be a monogamous. So she's then trying to counter that by talking about how difficult it is for her. And I, I don't think the fandom has Getting any interest in it. Getting gifts is so difficult. Oh, it's so hard. It's Wedding so Cody's pencil is so difficult. But it's like, um, for me, it's sort of like if... Uh, if, if my, I don't know, if my brother's sister, if my brother's sister, my brother's wife was dying and I made it all about how deeply it affected me to him and to her mother and to her children. And the world at large. And the world at large. And I just, all I talked about was how difficult it was for me. You're like, simmer on down, lady. Nobody cares. I get that it, even in, in, in ideal polygamy, which I don't think you guys have, that that would be difficult. But to make it as though this is... Just everything, just she's such a martyr. She's just, it's oh, so difficult for her. Oh, it's so hard. And I'm just like, shut up. You know? Even and, if it was true, we wouldn't care. And even we if know it was true. Okay. So then we get back to Christine. She's had, she has Aspen and Mitch, who, that's her oldest, right? Her, well, Aspen's her oldest. I, I, the original kids, I get confused whether they're Janelle or Christine's. Which tells you a lot about how the show works. So Aspen and Mitch, who are adorable and who I really, I really like, and who are both apparently pretty quiet, or just quiet on camera. And then McKelty and Tony are there, who I think we. I just had commented to John that Aspen and Mitch hadn't talked when Christine said something, and they both said yeah at the same time, and that was it. And we're like, okay, well, at least they're in unison. And so Christine talks about how great it is to see your kids become wives, your daughters become wives, and then become mothers. Well, mother, because she has um, only McKelty as a child. And she talks very favorably about the men and about how, uh, how good of husbands they are. She has nothing but good things to say about Tony. And then Tony's kind of a creepy little jerk the whole time. And McKelty acts like she's 12. Because they're painting, like they're doing like a sip and, sip and paint thing. I assume this is all set up for the show while she tells them about the fact that she wants to start dating again and that she's actually taking the first step towards dating. So they're painting this stuff and she's like, so I've hired a matchmaker. She talks a great deal about, um, she does make a joke about how she doesn't know what Cody will do, but he has Robin, so he'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to spend it with her. And then she's like, oh, was that snarky? So, um... And then Mary, of course, is like, I have nothing. I don't know why you're asking what I'm doing for Valentine's Day. I don't got anybody. And it's like, yeah, we know. Here's your sign. You got it. So just wait. There's more delusion from her later. So, but then, but then McKelty is like, oh, so, because they're making this painting, and Christine's like, I made one of these for your father. She's like, oh, do you still have it? Is it upstairs? Did you keep it for your next lover? And then Tony's like, well, that would be weird. I don't know why. Apparently Tony wasn't mic'd or he was mumbling because all of his stuff had subtitles. But he's like, well, that would be weird if you kept the picture, not the frame. And I'm like, yeah, McKelty, you're being weird. And she just keeps doing this, like, um, every time Christine says something, McKelty's like, oh, this and that. Or are you going to do this? Do you want to have ice cream? And Tony's like, you should taste all the flavors. And then because like, yeah, Tony tasted all the flavors twice. He had so many flavors. I'm like, are you, like, nobody cares. How much crack did you snort or like, smoke before? It's that Plexus energy drink. <laughs> but like, why is she Jeez. so hyped up? She's so hyped up and it's kind of vaguely inappropriate. And it's all, it was just a lot. And it was like, this is, this is why you will not be getting your own spinoff show. Um, that's my impression of McKelty. It's fine if you like. But anyway, so we'll get back to what Christine actually says, which is, she goes, would you want a new husband? And Christine's like, well, you know, Truly's not ready for that, but I am meeting a matchmaker. She's like, I told the matchmaker the whole deal about being multiple wives and all of that. And so the matchmaker was like, hey, all we need to tell them is that you're a female, you're 50, you have several kids and grandkids. I did think it was interesting that she said she had six kids and three grandkids because... She's counting Maddie's kids as hers, which I think is appropriate. So I would have said 12 or 13 kids, but then I wonder if the the the, uh, the matchmaker was like, hey, I get that you consider those to be your children as well, but I think you're going to scare off a guy if you say you have 13 children. 
So why don't we just stick with your biological children for now, and then when you get to know them, you can explain your predicament and the fact that you actually have more children than that. Um, and then she explains the kind of guy she wants. She wants someone who's monogamous. She wants basically, she describes him as tattoos, bald in a motorcycle, the opposite of Cody. And somebody said, oh, let's not kid herself. Cody is also bald. <laughs> <laughs> so he has when he's on the side and I think she meant, meant rides a motorcycle not just like takes it out in the sun and wipes it down yeah so Cody used to have a motorcycle for a drive Cody used to have a, also in season 4 also on our Patreon and I think on our I don't know I think this is the one we just did was the one where he called where Cody says he was going to go for a motorcycle drive and Mary's like it's called a ride like don't but he used to have a motorcycle, and I... He also used to have hair. I I harp on that a lot because the kids were complaining of not having enough food and not having enough money for braces, but he had a motorcycle. And that's 100% a vanity thing because he also had a convertible. And no, it was not a convertible he got from his job. The one he got from his job was in Vegas. That was a different... Which John likes to point out is the ugliest... Every time he sees it, he's like, that's the ugliest... This convertible. convertible I've ever seen. And you've, you said you've never seen it as a convertible before. No, it's some Nissan. I don't even know what it's called, but it's not as ugly with... When it's not a convertible. <laughs> right. I thought it was like a PT Cruiser, but, I, you I know. I mean, it wishes it could be a PT Cruiser. And those <laughs> are ugly. And then she says, you know, she wants him to be monogamous. She wants him to have, be a good communicator, a good sense of, have a good sense of humor, be a good partner. Basically, all the opposite things of Cody... Which, first little, like she didn't say it that directly. What she said was she wanted bald, tattooed, and a motorcycle. Kind of the opposite of Cody. Like, not on purpose, but maybe a little bit. And then she goes on to say all this other stuff about being a good communicator. Cody's a terrible communicator. In person. In person. But he's a terrible communicator. Not just in the words that he uses. Gaslight. He knows that word. Transmute. <laughs> he knows Transmute. that word. Transmute. <laughs> No, but not just that. He doesn't know what it means, but he knows the word and how to say it. But he also liked the fact that when we when he meets with Janelle, it's been six weeks. So I cannot... I have every single TikTok I have made, which is also a link in my bio, I have made since this show, this episode aired, was me mentioning the fact that he left her for six weeks. Six weeks. I mean, if John disappeared for 24 days, I would be calling hospitals. 24 hours. <laughs> Sorry, 24, 24 hours. Days. And I couldn't find you, I'd be checking in hospitals. If it was a week, I would be calling lawyers. <laughs> like, and I knew that you were okay, you just weren't, like, you just packed up and left. Like, I would start thinking abandonment. Two weeks, I would be packing up your stuff. Like, six weeks, uh, oh, okay, okay. Whew. I have to call myself and save this energy for when we get there, because it's it's coming. Need a little water. <laughs> it's, I'm just, I this is one day I might have a stroke on camera. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> a, you, they can't see what's happening, but you're. Um, I'm not wearing any pants. So then, no, stop that. <laughs> that is for the OnlyFans, which will be opening. Next month. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't like. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, so then Cody's like, you need to try all the flavors and all this. And after McKelty, make sure that we know. And I, my memory is they got married really young. So I was like, he must have been just tearing through his late teens or something like that. None of my business. I'm not here to, 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 to sex shame anyone. But it is an odd thing to brag about to your mom and your sister or your sister's husband is how many partners he's had. And then Christine goes on and on about how she doesn't want a full scoop, but maybe like a taster spoon. So I'm thinking she means, I don't want to know what she means. But then she shares a lot, which I genuinely do feel sorry for her, which is to say that she knows Cody wasn't attracted to her. And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of going out there again, which is something I hear from a lot of people who have either gotten divorced or widowed. Um, and it's how I would feel. Like, I mean, I thought, like, what happened to John? And I'd be like, well, I'd be, I, I'd be celibate for the rest of my life. Because, and I haunt you. Because I barely found this guy at my peak. I don't know what I'm going to be doing now on the downhill slide into croneship. Like, I, it's just intimidating. And I think it's a very universal feeling is for people in the age of Tinder to feel like, how does someone who is not a Tinder-type person navigating this world... It's um, easy. Just hang out with your thing out. 
<laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Just get, get. <laughs> No, um, so she's like, and she, and she, she makes a comment about, well, first of all, Makes a comment that she didn't have a very good intimate relationship, which for me was like, did she just call Cody a bad lover? And you know what? Who could believe that? Who could believe that a with man with his pecs and his six pack? We'll, we'll get to that part, but well, yes, for definitely for for a dude who thinks that Janelle would stay with him because he's so hot with great pecs and six pack shows a level of delusion that does not translate to a good I mean, level maybe of Maybe you're intimacy. right. Maybe that was a joke, but we'll get there. We're not there. Um, but you're skipping ahead. I know. I am skipping ahead. But it, but but basically, I would be surprised if I heard that he was not a selfish lover. There, I said it. I said it. A man who has to have four women, who routinely cuts them off sexually when he gets annoyed with them. I, I just, and I'm just gonna say it. A so, man, except for the knob goblin. And a man, a man in his forties who has four wives already. I'm saying, I don't think he's satisfying them. I don't think he's meeting their 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 needs. I don't know that he has the time to. Frankly, not with how just two hundred dollar job an well, hour I don't job. Know that he knows how to. And then she made a comment about how she's scared. She's like, she doesn't. He's the only man I've ever kissed. What if I'm a bad kisser? And she says in there, she makes a comment that says, "Well, I know he he didn't like it." And I don't know whether she meant specifically her kissing, her sex life, her because he said many, 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 many times he was not attracted to her physically. He put it in the book. As John pointed out, they do have six kids together, but I had to point out to also to John that you can also get pregnant from bad sex that you don't enjoy. So, anyway. I not know. I don't, but she, but what's funny is that she doesn't say this the way I'm saying it. Like, she doesn't say, Cody was a bad lover who didn't like my kissing. She was very much like, I didn't have a good intimate relationship, all that she does say, and I, I'm going to disagree with her on this. She said that the reason she left her marriage was that Cody said he wasn't attracted to her and she didn't want her kids to say, see that. And I feel like that How was about probably... about the years and years and years of abandonment? Well, and last year she said the, the major breaking point for her was Isabel. I, I think, I do believe when she said it, like a lie detector would agree. I think that's what she felt. But I think if you really had to sit her down and have a long conversation, she would say it was more than that. Because I'm just like, this is not really consistent with other things she said that made more sense. Like her saying, when he said he was not going to be intimate with me anymore, which maybe is what she's alluding to, that was a breaking point for her. You saw it very clearly that she was like, no, okay, fine. You're not going to do that anymore. Then we're done packing up your stuff. Because that's that's him saying like, I'm done with us. Like we can, he they what is she losing at that point if she leaves? You know what I mean? Like... I mean, I, I agree with her, too. Now, I've said this before, which is if you're in a relationship without sex, it's not any of my business. But he was not in a relate. He was in relationship where you have having sex with mul multiple partners, but not her. And he just cut her off until she acted a certain way. Yeah, I would be done, too. Nobody. No. Oh, gosh. Nobody's telling me, like, stop it. <laughs> That's not to calm me down like you do with toddlers. <laughs> But I don't want to be parent. I don't want to be treated that way as an adult to someone who parents me. R respecting boundaries totally reasonable. You you know John all the time will say things like "Wow, that's kind of mean," and I'll be like "I'm sorry." I need to change my tone. <laughs> but for him to but if he says something like "That's it, you're not getting any more money till you get in line," and you, you know, right? It's just weird. It's a weird. I don't want to have that kind of relationship with someone, and neither does she. Um, and so that's whole that whole section. Okay, we get do we get any more of her? That was the end of her this whole episode. Oh Lord, there's so much more. There's so much more. Okay, we'll go a little faster through some of this. So like um, Cody and sex. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, we're, we're gonna, uh, but unlike him, we'll try to hit the highlights <laughs> and make sure that it's satisfying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was inappropriate. We're not the kind of people to make body sex jokes. Going blue here, but I mean, we started it. Okay, um, I'm actually just gonna do. Okay, so then there was like a there was there was the Janelle conversation, and it was broken up by the Mary stuff. Do you just want to do the Mary stuff? Oh, sure. Well, let's do the Mary stuff. So um, it does Mary not. Got a pillow. It does not. It does person. It does not look self filmed. She's at her B and B with her friend Jen. 
Yes, a, um, a guest left behind a pillow of her and her mom, Bonnie, who has since passed about a year ago. Oh, that's very sad. Um, and Mary sits down with Jen to say, I'm going to move my business, my clothing business, which as far as I know is the LuLaRoe stuff, from Flagstaff to, uh, to Arizona. Sorry, from Flagstaff to St. George, Utah. It sounds like... Well, she said part of it was that she was traveling back and forth, but I do think also it sounds like part of it is that Jen helps her and works for her, and so if she lived near Jen, Jen could help her with both of the stuff. So, yes, I get that that she said she's sick of traveling, but I don't, you know, anyway. So she's kind of a little like, oh, Robin's going to be upset. And it's like, yeah, of course Robin's going to be upset. Now everything is about Robin. Everything's about Robin. Now, I have two possible... Um, reasons and i think it might be both one is she's worried about losing mary's money and two she's worried about her um, someone called her an emotional support animal which is mary more like an emotional vampire well i'm just saying like she uses mary when it's convenient for her <laughs> to, to um, feed to feed <laughs> off of and provides nothing to mary but uh, kind of i i consider to be incredibly manipulative I don't know what Dev defines as abusive, but she is certainly not kind. And I, I will, I see a lot of people who are like, well, we don't know, you know, Robin might be doing this because of Cody. This is all be Cody stuff. But anything involving Mary is not Cody because I have a whole thing when we get to the end and we see next week's sneak peek. But anyway, uh, we meet Jen. Jen, I like Jen for Mary. I don't, I'm not crazy. Like, I have no opinion on Jen as a person. Like I'm not like, man, that Jen's so great. Let's bring her back. But I'm happy to see Mary have people in her life who like her. <laughs> I mean, what a novelty. I understand why Janelle and Christine don't get along with Mary. And I consider that to be a case of like, okay. Mary's still holding out for Cody. Yeah, I mean, like, a little bit of, like, there's some long, there's there's stuff going on long before we saw that I can't even weigh in on. I get why Christine and Janelle don't want to be friends with Mary. I also get why Mary kind of feels sad about that, but it also makes sense. It's a little bit of, like, there's been tension for years. But Robin, but Cody and Robin have treated her a billion times worse than anything with Christine. Because Mary doesn't seem to like Christine or Janelle either. She's a little bit like, well, we used to have fun times. Well, way to sell it, Mary. Wow, whereas um, Robin and Cody are using her. Remember last se was it last season where Cody's like, yeah, I really hope Mary stays and pay help pay off Coyote Pass. You're like, wow, dude, you are... C Cody is kind of like reality gold because he has no sense of how awful he is. And he'll really stand with his whole chest, say the worst thing you've ever heard, and then be like, I don't understand why this is not getting me the result that I wanted. I really thought this was the best answer. Um, so anyway, Jen was owned a pest control business that apparently went for the houses. Her and um, Mary had uh, became best friends. Um, Mary does make a joke about how Jen's title is BFFE, which is like best friend for, forever or some. I can't remember what she said. How 14 year old of them. Wait, wait, but she said we have to find something better for the business cards. Which makes me think that she's actually might be bringing Jen on as an actual. I know part of that is a joke, but I also wonder if part of that movie isn't really about like because Mary does all this stuff where she sells these clothes online and have to ship them. And I'll tell you, anyone who's had like an Etsy store where you have to ship stuff, there's a reason why I do books that ship directly from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or you can request through your library, or you can get ebooks or audiobooks directly. Well, maybe we should start a pyramid scheme where everybody just holds them up in their own place and then we get paid regardless. Yeah. But anyone, I used to have, so those who don't know, I used to do glass beads and I used to sell them on Etsy. Um, and like sell lamp is a working. generous word. I sold some. <laughs> But, like, you have to take pictures, you have to do that whole thing, you have to pack it, you have to ship it, you have to deal with customer service when, like, they put down the wrong address, or, like, where is it, and here's a shipping number, and I lost the shipping number, can I have another shipping number, here's another shipping number, will it arrive damaged, let me see the damage, like, all of that takes a ton of time. If Mary is making any amount of money at it, which, from what I understand, she is, she could probably have two or three people who just manage the shipping. Um, and so, so there's that, that thing... But uh, she said Jen has been... I am happy that Mary has someone. Because she said Jen's big thing is she doesn't go to the gossip mag. She doesn't sell. She doesn't have 
a TikTok account where she's selling the secrets or a Reddit account or anything like that. I am happy that Mary has that. Not sure how great advice Jen gives because she was around during the catfishing thing and didn't save Mary from that, but we all have the friend you can only say so much. We all have that friend where you're like, yeah, we're close. Um, I have some very good friends that are, we give advice, but we kind of stay out of each other's business to a certain degree when someone says, well, I'm going to write this book or I'm going to do this because it's just like you have to have that kind of boundary um, or or maybe you don't and you have closer friends than I do, but that's how we do that. So she, so Jen has been with her through the legal divorce, helped her with the catfishing situation and get, doesn't um, gossip. Then we go to Janelle, but I'm just going to finish with Mary. So they go to the, out to the carriage house, which they got to clean out, which was a whole, like, we got to film something. And it does look like it's actually film filmed with camera crews. Oh, shocking. Um, they go out there and she's like, I want to do more events. I want to do more weddings. And I'm like, you know what? Good for Mary getting her business on TV, getting a little something back after being, having the worst husband and one of the worst breakups I've seen. Get, you get that money. So she's like, Jen's like, we can put the, the chairs and stuff into storage. And Mary's like, wow, what a great idea. And it's like, yep, thank you, Mary. This is, this is why this is not feeling authentic. Um, and she's like, we can put the rest in totes and we can clean out this carriage house and we can make it into basically her LuLaRoe area. And then they talk about putting in a garage with an industrial kitchen behind it. And I'm like, Mary is making some money. Um, I hope, still want to know the forensic audit. Wonder if how much of that money is going towards... When's she going to be able to pay off Cody? Coyote Pass. Cody Coyote. Pass. <laughs> Cody, Cody Pass. Um, and then she says one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, which is she, this is where I'm like, I'm like so all in on Mary. I'm like, yeah, this is going well. This is good. And then Mary says, like, I'm like, yeah, you get it. You get your friends. You move out of there. You start, you know, I'd, I'd die to see Mary dating. Given her level of judgment between getting catfished and then trusting Robin and then trusting Cody, like, this girl has no judgment. She should be with a matchmaker. And they should get her, like, an absolute mayonnaise of a man. Because she is completely beguiled by anyone with the slightest bit of, like, oh, you're my friend. And she's like, oh, I'm your friend, even though all your behaviors say otherwise. And a lot of people have pointed out she did grow up in a cult. And so maybe she just never had a choice. But she seems to be good at selling stuff. She was the first one of the family who figured out how to make money off of being on TV. Unlike My Sister Wife's Closet, which, according to Mary, the problem with that was that Robin wasn't in charge. <laughs> and I was like, how many times do I need to say this? But I'll say it over and over again. Once again, I had an Etsy shop. I, I've made jewelry. I've done all that creative work. Making the stuff is the easy part. Like, Robin thought that her job was to design ugly jewelry, no design experience, no fabrication experience. She no didn't see... market. Well, part of it is... No market. If you want to make stuff to sell, there's certain things to take into account. Like, what is the production cost of this? Does is anybody there... in the world want it? Does anyone in the world want it? You know, there's certain things, like when I made jewelry, like... Certain materials are cheaper, easier to work with. Certain patterns can be made faster than others. She didn't want to do, do any of that. She just wanted to draw something and then have them turn out a $400 piece of crap that no one wanted that was unbelievably overpriced. Um, we used to have, I still have a lot of Brighton. I don't know if you know Brighton. It's, I don't know how you describe it, like a sort of mid-tier mid like jewelry brand. John's aunt had a store that for before they opened the Brighton stores was the number one seller of Brighton. So I own a lot of Brighton stuff because it was sort of like, and I bought all my family Brighton stuff for years. We'd go to, we'd go to, you know, auntie's store and it, I, it's lovely. It's like nice, solid, heavy jewelry um, that was like kind of expensive, but compared to this, my sister wife stuff was like a dime a dozen. It was so cheap compared to what they were doing, but it had sort of a similar, I would say, level of quality. And there was a market for it. There was a market for it. And it was nice. And it was attractive. I still have bracelets of it, necklaces of it, purses, your mom's <laughs> luggage. I mean, we've got... Whew, and uh, your aunt's store went out of business, luckily, right before COVID. I mean, it was sad at the time, but then it was like, holy cow, would she have been in trouble <laughs> if COVID had hit. 
Um, anyway, it was a great store. I still have a lot of clothing from there, too. It was super cute. Um, not, it wasn't just Brighton. It was other stuff, too. She has great taste. Uh, but the stuff was terrible. But for Mary to say that the number one problem with my sister wife's closet was that Robin wasn't in charge. But the thing is, what Robin wanted to do was design ugly stuff, and she wanted everyone else to do the actual work. All of the other stuff, because the hardest part of almost any job, like writing books, is marketing. I mean, every single author you will talk to, and I talk to a lot because I also teach authors, coach authors, is how do I sell my book? I've written this book. I've edited this book. I've gotten a great, gotten a beautiful cover. Whoa. I'll do this one because this is, this is my most popular book of Murders and Mages, my most popular one. But one of my prettiest covers is this one. Whoa. Um, but how do I sell it? Now that I have it, how do I sell it? It's a huge part of our business, a huge part of our job. Robin didn't want to do that part of the job. She wanted to just design the jewelry and then tell everybody else to now sell it. She didn't want to deal with distribution. She didn't, I never saw them once talk about things like. Much like how she wanted to be a sister wife and not meet or embrace any of them or their kids. Or learn their family culture or any of that. Well, she, she, she wanted to change the family culture and did away with all the uh, family culture. Yeah. Okay. But I, I'm still holding that. So next week we see Robin crying about how, in the sneak peek, we see Robin crying about how, why can't Mary figure it out here? Mary does keep saying, hey, I am worried. Cody has nothing to do with me, but, I'm, but I am willing to work on the relationship, and I'm worried that if I leave, we'll never get a chance. I will tell you that I have absolutely been there. As a 13-year-old girl who was worried that the guy that she had a crush on that used to like her, that if she left this this whatever friend group that he would never get back with her. Let me tell you, Mary, as someone who has been there, albeit much, much younger, he's not coming back. And in fact, in fact, if there was any hope, which there isn't, but if there was, leaving would be the best thing. If there was any hope, and there is not. But if she packed up and left and said, well, if you're not interested in me, then I'm starting a new life, he actually might change his tune. He might start pulling a Christine, because he is obsessed with Christine. He is obsessed. There's not a th thought in his head, but Christine, 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 Christine. If Mary packed up and left, I don't think he would follow her. But if, I don't know if she had a few years earlier, he might have. He might have tried to, he certainly was willing to woo her back when, when uh, they were moving, when they were trying to move to Flagstaff, which meant her selling her house and giving him all the money so he could buy Ma Robin a mansion. But um, I'm going to say this, which is, first of all, Robin is a terrible person. Because you know, if he has been telling uh, Janelle for years that he wasn't attracted to Christine, he's been telling, and Janelle said that he's been telling her that he's not interested in Mary. He's been telling Robin as well, and probably a million times more. And she is telling this. She's like, Mary, he still talks about us all getting out on the property. Yeah, I know. He told us as well. He hopes that Mary will pay it off. Yeah. Like, he doesn't, he just, he wants to use her for the money. He wants to keep her attached well enough so that he can continue to, I don't know if he's getting her TLC money. I don't know if he's getting some MLM money. I don't know if he's just hoping that she'll pay, you know, I don't know if she's still paying off Coyote Pass. But he wants her for the, for the resources that he accuses Janelle of wanting. Okay, so the last bit, this is a little tiny bit out of order, is Janelle. So it starts off with... First of all, Janelle has self-filmed herself from this close in the most unflattering light. They really need to send them a little... I love my girl Janelle. She's incredibly beautiful. But there could... And it looks like she's been sobbing. She has made an appointment with Cody to meet up at the only restaurant in town, apparently. An appointment. An appointment. How romantic. Um, and she has said that she... It'd be stupid to throw away 30 years, but she just doesn't... She's just not digging him anymore. She's not pining for him. She didn't miss him. Um, she doesn't know, you know, he was a good father to her kids. I mean, my opinion. Uh, but now he doesn't want to do that anymore, and it's just not worth it. So she is heading into this. I feel, metaphorically, her bags are packed or at the door, but she's willing to hear him one more time. That is not the energy he comes in with. So he comes in, drops to his knees, and begs for forgiveness. Wait, no. It's six weeks later, and he's still cold and complaining that he got ice water. He comes in, he's still, he's still complaining that it's cold outside. He comes walking in, 
And he's like, oh, hey, she's like serious face. If I came into a and meeting. And sitting down. Sitting down. If I came into a meeting with anyone the, looking the way that Janelle would, was looking, I would have assumed I was about to get dumped, fired, disowned. Like, I don't know what it is. I'm in trouble in some, like, there's no, he has zero situational awareness. Um, I don't know whether, I do think some of this is just a factor that he's used to just coming in and kind of flirting his way out of it with his wife. Like, I think he's just used to, he's calmed down. He definitely prepared a speech. He has a whole speech. So he comes in and he's like, oh, hey, long time no see. I wanted to punch him right there. My blood pressure, long time no see? I'm not your neighbor who went away for the summer. I'm not, I'm not the, the little old lady who took a sabbatical at the bakery. Hey, long time no see. It's not like I came back to a bookstore I haven't been to in a while. This is your wife, your wife. In fact, she should be the number one wife because Mary's been out for a while. Janelle was number two. Number three is gone. Theoretically, if he had a, you know, leapfrogged Robin to the front of the list, this should be the wife you've been with almost 30 years. Long time no see. And then he pulls out, oh, where, oh, do I not get a hug? Which is to any, you hadn't heard this when I described it. I was like, oh, he's such a where's my hug guy. You had not heard that. I don't hang around those kind of people. Okay. And I had explained to John, like, that's, that's sort of a way, like, like reply guys. Do you know what a reply guy is? Okay. Welcome, John, to the, the new century. So, I assume, you tell me if this is something that is, like, culture. Like, if I said, oh, he's the kind of guy who goes, where's my hug? Tell me if that's something you know. But to me, it was hilarious that that is almost the most offensive thing he could say. Because the guys who are like, where's my hug, are always like a little creepy. They're always kind of pushing kind of a boundary. They're in a, little, a little inappropriate. Like, they usually do it to like young gals. Like, oh, where's my hug? Oh, I'm just a big teddy bear. All the girls like me. Mm. And they're always kind of like a little, you're always kind of putting up with them. They're the kind of guys I would see at the range. And they'd be like, oh, where's my hug? Okay, John has no clue what I'm talking about. I know we have viewers from international. Is this an international concept? Is this just an American concept? Or is this just something that I have heard in my ultra, ultra online community? Creepers. Because I am definitely that. So he does all that. Yeah, then he sits down and he's like, oh, that water's really cold. Okay, Captain Obvious, it's got ice in it. Like, what is wrong with this guy? She has no reply. I could not imagine a worse beginning to this meeting. Oh, it gets better. He immediately, I wrote so gross. I wrote so gross, long time no see. And I was like, where's my hug? I wrote so gross next to it. Then, oh, by the way, and his hair looks so bad. There's nothing wrong with losing your hair. It's a natural thing that many of us go through. No matter how hard you fight with your special creams from, you know, the hair gets less and less over time. It happens to men, happens to women. Nothing wrong with being bald. It is absolutely ridiculous, though, how he is going bald. He has this tiny little strip in front, and he's got these two long tendrils, which we know takes him, according to one of the previous episodes, an hour to do the curly girl method, which is something that Robin... And I was like, the guy couldn't have pulled it back into a bun, which is what Janelle thinks he looks best at, which is very fitting because she kind of has like that... Um, I did that video where she talked about like how she listens to Eminem and she listens to German industrial music, which I think is Rammstein. And, um, and that's v that look, you know what I'm talking about? Like what they do, to me is very much of that time. And frankly, I mean, I'm not saying I'm attracted to Cody because I would have to vomit on my shoes if I did. But I would say that I think that is a more attractive look for him, especially for the age that he's at, than these two Shirley Temple little like wiglets hanging over his eyeballs. Like, mm. and from the side, you can see, like, all of this skin here. And it looks a little ridiculous. So, already he's starting off badly. I also read this. And so he comes in and goes, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed by my behavior. I realize there's no safe way to talk to me. I've just been transmuting anger to grief. Like, he has clearly practiced this. I'm guessing that him and Robin, like, sat down. And maybe he was in the manosphere and he's like, blah, blah, blah. But he definitely thought that was, like, it and that he was going to be done. Right? Did you get that vibe? But it was definitely prepared. 
he's definitely in a little better frame of mind in this conversation, but he doesn't realize how serious it is. This is serious. She has packed her bags. They are by the door. She's about to leave. And he kind of comes in with this like flippant attitude of like, here's a half-hearted apology. Doesn't really address any core issues. He's like, I realize it wasn't a safe place for you to talk. Now, why don't we just make up and be done? You know what I mean? Like, I, I would have gone feral. I would have... We've discussed, we've discussed this before. This is not me bragging about like what a, you know, what a cool chick I am. I do have a little bit of a rage problem, which has gotten so much better through therapy and practice because I'm an adult who can control my emotions. But I'm pretty sure if I was in a relationship like that, you would not get the best version of me. And I don't think I would have flipped a table literally, which is a reference to Teresa Judice of Real Housewives of New Jersey, whenever I use that reference. But I definitely would have been like, are you kidding me? You don't talk to me for six weeks. You abandon my family. You think you can just come in and be like, oh, I'm a little sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's get back to the show. And he's like, so the big thing that's going to happen through this, this entire thing is that every single time she talks about their issues, he brings up Christine. Every single time. Every time. Every time she asks even a little bit, which is, I guess, better than his, his normal one, which is to bring up how Robin is so faithful and Robin is so great. We'll get to that later. But it's not a great, I mean, in either case, it's, I actually made a note to make a video. Oh my gosh, I have so many notes. Um, where I compare, where he is talking and he is saying how, you know, you only care about us and I need to worry about the family and compare it to when they went to Galveston with the therapist and Christine says almost the same exact thing, and he tells her almost the same thing back. And then says, I'm so surprised that she that she left. So, okay. Um, so she's like, well, you know, he seems more calm. Last time he came in with a chip in his shoulder, which is true. He came in yelling about how cold it was in his leather jacket, which is like, get a parka, dude. Quit, quit dressing to be on TV and dress for the weather. You know, and things. She's like, I just thought we were going to have this conversation and finalize that we would be separate for Christmas and just kind of deal with it from then. And he came in kind of guns a-blazing. And, um, and she basically says, he does his little... He's like staring at the menu. He's like, I mean, he just really has all the wrong energy for this conversation. And she's like, I want to stay separated. And he has almost no reaction, but he's like, oh, okay, well, I thought, you know, and she's like, well, I'm open to counseling. I really think having a third person here would be helpful because I think a, a marriage counselor who was like, wait, he left six weeks ago. He had a, he stormed out of the house and left six weeks ago. And you haven't spoken since. That's a big deal. Do you not prioritize it or whatever? Um, but he just seems to think that's super normal. Um, so she went to third party and he immediately goes into, oh, well, that's good because Christine didn't want that. I suggested that, but Christine didn't want that. And she has, she has not a lot of patience for him. I think she is someone, by the way, this is my opinion. I do strengths coaching, uh, Clifton Strengths or Strength Finder coaching. If, you, if you're in the corporate world, you probably heard of it. I think she's a strength called intellection. Um, I have no proof of this, but when you see people with intellection, a lot of times it takes them a while to formulate their thoughts because they kind of, they kind of have to, it's like cooking bread. Like you don't have, before bread is done, it's dough. It's not like soup where you can have less cooked soup and more cooked soup. It's like either it's not or it is with bread. Anyway, and the idea is, I think my point being that I, she says more in the interview and I think part of that is because she just takes time to articulate herself. That's my thought. I also think it's because, and she says this herself, which is she doesn't really like conflict. And normally they just don't acknowledge it. They just get mad. And then he comes back and he does, I'm guessing one of these half-hearted, well, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed by how I act. I realize there's no safe way for you to talk to me. I transmuted my, my agarant to grief and I won't do that anymore. And she goes, okay, great. It's over. I think that's what normally happens. But the problem is her kids aren't willing to do that. And so now she's at this point where either, and he's telling her, you've got to pick the kids or you've got to pick me. Although he did seem to soften on that. Um, and he just goes on and on about Christine. And she looks so bored slash angry every single time. You can just see her disengaging from the conversation when he's like, I'm sorry I wrote on you with my pen. Um, it'll be fine. It, there, it's blue. You're blue. 
<laughs> that left a little more of a mark than I thought. I thought I was being sarcastic. Whoopsie. Unlike, unlike Cody, I will actually apologize and do something to fix that later. Sorry about that. Um, so, so he's like, Christine left and she wasn't talking to me. Um, what does that say? Should have been a doctor. He says he was so, oh, caught off guard. He keeps saying he's caught off guard by, by Christine. And that's when Janelle's like, I don't know what he's talking about. He's been telling me for years that he wasn't attracted to Christine. And I would have kicked his butt out as soon as he told me that. And I was like, well, good for her. But I kind of feel like he's not telling you that he's not attracted to you, but he's telling you he doesn't value you not being there for six weeks. So I kind of feel like, will you? Or did you just figure out that, you know, anyway. I would have left the first time he said that. And um, and then she goes, well, you haven't talked to Savannah. And he's like, oh, ooh, uh, uh, you, you, you know. And he just kind of stutters. And they don't really... Somehow, somehow the next thing that he says is his interview where he goes, I think Janelle's with me because I'm hot and I have great pecs and six pack abs. And I don't know if he's making a joke or not, because either way, wildly inappropriate, who would say something like that? And I don't, I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to find a video of this because that we do not see a man who has, I mean, everybody has six pack abs. It's just most of us is under a thick layer of fat. We're going to share my six pack after, right? No. In the oh. fridge? My beer? Your beer. Ha ha ha. No, but my, my point is that uh, he had to be joking. He doesn't really think he has six pack abs and stuff. And secondly, if he does have six pack abs, then maybe he could find time to spend time with Savannah. And if it was a joke, he should have said his great hair. And then, oh gosh. So. So then he has this whole big thing why how the reason he doesn't see Savannah is because she kicked him out of his place. But it's weird because he wasn't seeing Savannah before. Then he says, well, he has a lot of business to do. And he does most of his business in the evenings. And that's when he would spend time with Savannah. And so he can't do that because he's with Robin and her kids. But that's because of Robin. And since Janelle doesn't want him at her place, then he can't be with Savannah. And I'm like, that's the exact same excuse he had with Truly when he said... When they went and dropped off Isabel uh, back east with Maddie and Caleb, um, when they came back, he didn't see Truly for months. And he said, yeah, I don't really want to see her because I don't want to see Christine. And he says that like that's some like, I'm going to go, oh, it's understandable if you neglect your child because you're mad at their parent. Why didn't you say that earlier? Oh, Cody, who could blame you? And now he's doing it again. And I have a couple issues with him saying that. One. Just a couple. Well, no, no, no. The, first of all, he's just, it's it, it just. He's awful. Like, there's no excuse for that. I'm trying to think of a word that is is appropriate. But all of them are very, very inappropriate. But the idea is not spending time with Savannah because, because Janelle put down a boundary. Just, I don't want to hear anything about it. You love your kids because you love your kids. Anyone who's been divorced, who has kids, should figure this out. And a lot of dead parents don't figure it out. Men and women who go, I don't like my spouse, so I'm just going to abandon my children in order to not have to deal with them again. Or just because it's convenient, which seems like it is for Cody. But secondly, this thing he says about how he does a lot of business at night. I mean, unless he's a call girl. I don't know. This sounds more like him and his buddies talk after their work day. And you just think he's just BSing it. You think it's just... I don't think he works. I mean, Period. we know he has that gun, that that gun show thing, and the on the weekends. But that's like the weekends, and those are specifically anyone who kind of does like once again like craft fairs or gun shows or things like that. I didn't do gun shows, but I did like a couple of craft fairs. You have time during the week, like this. All he he uses this "I have to work" excuse an awful lot for a man who. Like, I believe it when Mary says she has this clothing business. I don't believe it when Cody says he... I think he, like, pulls out money and has deals with friends. Like, didn't he buy the, the, the property from somebody of his? I think he's got... I think he uses the extra um, family. People talk a lot about Robin using the money. I think Cody uses a lot of the money for, like, fly-by-night businesses and stuff like that. I'm just not buying that he's actually making that much money. Once again... From my mouth to the Lord's ears, please give us a financial audit of the Browns. A four-part <laughs> special where they break down all the money from 
Apparently they had bankruptcies before the show to present where the money has gone into who and let us mock them at every step of the way. So he goes, you can't see Savannah because he works too hard. And then he goes in this whole thing about how Garrison attacked Robin. He uses the word transmute again. She trans, and I'm like, I don't know where you heard. I don't know if you, World of Warcraft, like where did you learn this word transmute? But all of a sudden he's got to use it for everything. It definitely, he, he talks and use gaslight and manipulate. He talks like, um... Like he when, opened a dictionary and found random words and now tries to incorporate them into his sentences. Well, it reminds me of the kid who learns the new word of slang and uses it every two seconds. And I bet you who he talked to was Robin. This definitely feels like he talked to Robin. They worked it through. And that happens with you and I. When we have a conversation and we work through something difficult, like a frustration with something. Like, for instance... This weekend, or last week, we found out about our insurance. Oh, my gosh. John is still, we oh, the whole weekend we were riled up. We found out, we couldn't figure out why we didn't get our car insurance bill. So we call them, and they go, oh, you haven't been insured for a year. And we're like, we sent you a check last year. They're like, and, and, and they go, well, we don't have any proof of that. We said, we sent you a check. And in fact, we eventually remembered they sent us back a check, and we called them and said, hey, you sent us a check back. We sent for our car insurance, and they go, oh, no, it's okay. It's applied to your car insurance. Your bank just sent two checks. And we're like, we don't think that's the case. And they're like, well, we got two checks. Your home insurance is paid off. Your car insurance is paid off. We're like, well, if you say so, we trust you. And they said yes. And then we had to spend five hours getting them to hunt down that phone call. Way more than five hours. And the canceled check. For them to say, we agree, we told you we were covered, so you are in fact covered, but we won't cover you for 2024 unless you pay us for last year and this year. And we're like, but we didn't have any claims. Like, what? we're paying you for what? Anyway, all day Thursday. Don't have AAA insurance. All day, they suck. All day Friday. Suck. Talked to five different people about how a nervous breakdown, had to pull out all of our old st paperwork get online, then our bank wouldn't let us log in, totally unconnected but infuriating, <laughs> to find the proof of it. And John about lost his mind, but we just... We, I was nice right up until I wasn't. Well, the, lady, the last lady we that he talked to was like, I don't care what they said earlier, here's the deal. And John's like, then why did I talk to supervisors, different people, names... And you were very nice. You asked to talk to the manager and thank the manager for the work that the other people had done who helped us but could not resolve the issue, but then the last lady was super rude. So then we just found someone new that was local, called them up, they got us, well, who was it, Farmers? Dun, 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 dun. Farmers? Went Far with Farmers. Not AAA. Got us all new Ever. stuff. Significantly better coverage, $200 a year cheaper. No, like five. Because um, we also switched over our house. Significantly better house coverage. So, I don't know. I don't know what that yeah, point was. Yeah, I was like, do the math again, because that math doesn't appear to math. Oh, I was going to say, though, but now when we tell the story of what happened, we've rehearsed it between us so many times that we can do this, which is to bounce back and forth and say this. I'm sorry, I wrote you again. <laughs> Take my pen away. <laughs> I did it right there. <laughs> um, anyway. And this, this conversation sounds like he had a million conversations. Then they cut to Robin, and she's like, I never wanted an apology from Garrison. I never asked for it. In fact, I'm mad at Cody for asking for it. And I'm like, she's really throwing Cody under the bus a lot this season, which I like to see because I don't think he's going to like it when he starts watching the episodes and sees how often she criticizes him. But she's doing it to deflect blame from herself. And uh, it's working. So, she, and, and he goes off about Gabe Garrison and stuff, and Janelle just goes, I can't, I can't get into that. That This is the problem. I just want you to be a father to all the kids and a husband to all the kids. And then she asks him, do you really want plural family? Okay, then we had an interruption with Mary, but we already did that. So then do you really want it? And he immediately goes into, this marriage has been a burden that I've carried like Atlas for years, and when I put it down, no one picked it up. That is not an answer to her question. Oh, I think it is. And then he goes on about I how, you know, I spent days with you. I spent days with Christine. You know, I don't know why you guys are complaining. And then he says something about, I have this house. 
I have 15 years left in this house to raise these kids, which a lot of bothered a lot of people. My assumption is that he got a 20 year mortgage and he's paid off five of it. So he has 20 more years. And so that's where his head is. But a lot of people pointed out, I thought you were going to go to Coyote Pass soon. He just said he's going to spend 20, the next 15 years raising these kids. And she's like, I think you only see the little kids. And they cut to Mary saying, you know, he, he does. And he has this whole big thing where he goes, I really wish that Ari and Solomon were, uh, were valued in this family. And she's like, why do you say that? This is once again, like, you can't keep doing this. this is why I want a third person to have these discussions because, and by my view, no one has ever dismissed Ari and Solomon. I think it was, it was when he started saying everybody else was trying to kill them that I think was an issue. Um, and she's like, I, I'm not, you're not listening. I'm talking about our family. Like, why do you keep bringing up them? And that's where I was like, we're going to pull up that footage from Galveston when he did the exact same thing to Christine. And he just keeps, and then he's like, his big, this is once again his thing. So earlier in this episode, at some point, he said, I didn't overreact. I just went too extreme in my feelings, which is a synonym for overreacting. And then once again, he's like, I don't favor the young kids. I give favoritism to all the young kids. To which I would argue... Except if they're anybody else's but Robin's. Yeah. Because I, we've seen it on TV. I mean, I would believe him that he might have been like that when the kids were little. But we did not see that with Truly. We did not see any favoritism with Truly. He had that 11-day honeymoon that he needed. We... I very... I, I've been watching. I have not seen him holding Truly the way that when Solomon came, he's always holding Solomon. But I don't see him holding Truly very often. I see the other girls holding Truly. I don't see, I, I, I just haven't seen any favoritism towards Truly like I did, like we did with Solomon and Ari. Um, and then he says, you know, I give a lot to the younger kids, but I give a lot to the older kids. And I also call... A lot of grief, yes. BS on that, because I have not seen that. Now, initially, when the older kids were getting married, like when Maddie got married... He loved that because he got to be the center of attention at the bridal shower. He got to be the center of attention at the wedding. He performed the wedding. But that has rapidly faded off. I haven't seen that with many of his other older kids. I don't even think... I know that they, people talk about McKelty, him liking McKelty. I don't think he even... I mean, I think it's very minimal that he... I mean, he clearly likes her more than the others, but he does not seem to favor her any. Well, she's not Robin's kid. I would like to point out we might run out of battery. Okay, well, we'll keep going. We're almost at the end. Um, and so he keeps going on about how um, the, the, the house... It, so Janelle goes into this whole big thing where she... Um, you know, you got me all nervous. So I'm going to run out of battery. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. Um, so, but I have not seen favoritism with the older kids. I have not at all seen that. Um, and using the word favoritism is not helping you any. Now, yes, younger kids have different needs than older kids. A, a five-year-old versus a 25-year-old. I have to make appointments for the five-year-old. I've got to write, you know, we've got to, like, make sure he gets to school. We have to make decisions for him. We have to take him shopping. All those things. But that doesn't mean that I can still spend the same amount of emotional time with both of them. And obviously, someone who lives in your house needs something different. But you can prioritize. I have plenty well, of friends. Well, the truth is, I only care about Robin's kids. Like... Well, Janelle's maintaining a relationship with her older kids. Christine's maintaining yeah. a relationship with his older kids. It seems to be just Cody who can't do it. So clearly everyone Doesn't else has figured care. it out. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. Okay. Um, and so he keeps going into these other things. And he has this whole thing about, well, if you can't do plural marriage, then you can do plural monogamy. And which is what Robin had growing up, where they had two separate families and all that. So that's not so great. And why she's an expert on everything now. On everything. And Janelle's like, I never brought that up. Cody's saying that I brought that up. I'm not really interested. She's like, I really need to focus on my needs. And he's like, well, I don't know why you're punishing me like that. It's like, dude, you were gone for six weeks. You deserve you deserve to be kicked out, kicked off a cruise ship in the middle of the Atlantic. Like, don't act like you did nothing when you abandoned her for six weeks. And now you're like, well, I don't know why she's overreacting. I just completely abandoned her through a major holiday and for six weeks. And now she's acting like maybe I'm not the best dude on earth. Yeah. Yeah. We all agree with that. Um, and then she kind of brings up very carefully the fact that, you know, I'm really worried about my estate. I have no money. I have no, um, I have no background. He's like, well, you got the property. And she's like, well, yeah, you know. And he's like, I don't have this house. That was the thing about the 15 years. I don't have this house. The bank has this house. And it's like, 
okay, buddy, like, it's still a, it's still a humongous asset that they have been paying off. Um, and that money, apparently it's using a lot of money because you said that you couldn't afford to have, you know, anything. And he's like, when Robin needed a house, we moved heaven and earth so that she had a house. We put all of her stuff into um, trailers on the property so they could have that house. They lived in it ahead of time. But when I want a home, there's no, there's no place for me. And I'm like, that's right, you know. And he goes, oh, so she's just after me for my resources. And first of all, they're her resources too. All that money you have, I don't believe that he's making a lot of money on these businesses. I bet you he's like roughly breaking even. They're getting it from TLC and TLC's huge money that they paid for years and Janelle is just as entitled to that money as he is. And so they act like she's, oh, she just wants me for my money and if I don't provide money, I'm nothing to her. It's like, yeah, if you steal all of her money so that she is destitute and has no place to live, then yeah, yeah, maybe she thinks a little bit less of you. Um, and then he goes back into Christine again. He's like, well, I thought we made progress in Vegas. You know, now we're acting like, oh, it was so terrible and Christine left and I was following you around spouting poetry. And she's like, yeah, but I, that's nothing to do with now. And he just keeps going on about Christine and Christine and Christine. And it's, I'm, as, I'm infuriated too. I mean, what does that have to do with Janelle? Um, and then he's like, well, she, Christine's going to go off and she's just going to vomit about the divorce. What are you talking about, dude? You, Christine could say nothing. She could not say that you were a terrible lover. And you still would be an awful man. <laughs> because of what we have seen you do. The way that you screamed at her. The knife in the kidneys. Saying that you would never... You sacrificed so much to love her. How little you care about her. All of that. Like, I don't need Christine to say anything. I don't understand why she would leave such a kind and gentle man. And he just goes on and on. He's like, well, didn't we have good years in Vegas? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, we had some good years in Vegas. Like, she's so done. She's like, this has nothing to do with it. And it's just, it's just insane to me because if I had a wife that left, follow me on this. If I had a wife that left, you know what I'd be paranoid about? Another wife leaving. And if she even hinted that she was leaving, I would be all over that. If I cared. If I didn't care, I guess it, I'd be doing exactly what Cody does. But he seems, she's sitting here saying, I want to stay separated. And he's like, what's the point of being separate? And she's like, well, when we get to, when we're together, I let you back into my life. It's really easy just to pretend this conflict didn't happen and just to let it go. But I, I just can't do that anymore. You don't, you want me to pick between the kids and me. And at one point he like pseudo apologized for that. But then he went right back to the same old, same old. Okay, looks like the battery's about to die, so uh, she, he goes on and on about how this is, you're a simple woman, we have a simple relationship, and she's like, yeah, but our life is complicated, so it's not good enough if we're just simple. And then he's like, I thought we'd reconcile. She's like, I, this went better than I thought. He's like, I just figured we'd reconcile. And it's like, buddy, you have no clue what is happening. So thank you for joining us. I gotta go charge my camera. Uh, bye.